After I post a video, it's fun to see what the top comments end up being. Sometimes there's something really funny in there or just something interesting. But I go to check the comments after our 24 to nothing blowout loss in the postseason last episode. And all I can see is our quarterback Denzel Stockton getting compared to Jamarcus Russell. That is really where we are after one year in the Raiders rebuild franchise. What a season. This was an odd ride, everybody. To see the year end the way it did with such a pathetic stretch of games. At one point, around week 11, week 12, we would have been the number one seed in the AFC. But over our last six games, we only won a single game. And our quarterback, Denzel Stockton, including the playoffs, had four touchdowns in those six games and 13 interceptions as we averaged 12.6 points per game. So where do we go from here? We're firing our offensive coordinator and starting over. I'm wanting a brand new playbook, new scheme, and changes going into next season. I did like that our previous coordinator had all the boost for quarterback accuracy, but honestly, it didn't matter, and it didn't help Denzel Stockton, especially down the stretch. We're going to be hiring offensive coordinator Will Hudson, and now building from the Kevin Stefanski playbook. I will start from scratch there. And I'll make some changes going into our first games, taking out like some of those third and long quarterback draws and some of that nonsense. But we are completely starting over with our OC change and hoping that we can build a winner next year and have a better season overall for our quarterback Denzel Stockton. We're beginning to learn what kind of a quarterback he is. Stockton, I felt, got the ball out very quickly. And that aggressive decision-making, I think, showed up an awful lot. Maybe the quick game isn't for him. Like, yes, he missed a lot of throws, but when you see the 81 short accuracy, I think that makes some more sense. Like, 81 is not supposed to be automatic. Quarterbacks don't go much lower than, you know, 70 or mid-70s. So 81 really isn't even average or above, obviously. So I think we need to take better advantage of his strong arm and the downfield accuracy. Our new coordinator will help out that deep accuracy. And let's try to eliminate some of these quick throws that he was making mistakes on. I already want to make this offense a little bit faster. And I'd love to see some big play action deep ball game complement what we do with Josh Jacobs. So the Kevin Stefanski playbook was already the one that I kind of identified to try and maintain the run game focus and that style, but also having a pass game that maybe fits us a little better and we can build towards it and not running the New England playbook any longer. Remember for this offseason today, we do not own a first round pick. We already spent this pick in helping trade up to get Denzel Stockton. So whatever holes we have need to be filled on day two unless we can find a way to move up into round one, but I don't anticipate it. Our first selection comes at number 52, and then we have two third round picks thanks to the Kirk Cousins trade last year. We have a four, a six, and a seven. I'm eyeing our top 100 picks to try and find contributors there. I believe our greatest need is at defensive tackle, and we might need two instead of one player there. I also want to make sure we add some more speed at wide receiver. Ideally, I'd like to have Jacoby Myers take over for Hunter Renfro's slot role and find somebody who can line up outside and stress defenses vertically. I have scouted a lot of these wide receivers, and I want to make sure whoever I draft has... Ideally, B release. I think C release is okay if it's a very versatile player, but I'm really stressing here that I want somebody who can win outside. I'm really intrigued by Justin Gary. He might end up being one of my focus players, and he's on the cusp of being a round one talent. He's 21 years old, good top end speed, but a slow accelerator at 6'2", 226. 
he has the release, he has some route running, and he can make tough catches, catch in traffic. I really like him. Jalen Clinton is one player who might go a little too early, but he also fits as more of a pure deep threat. You have two kind of archetypes that can fit this mold. The deep threats who don't do a lot else, and the other more versatile players that happen to have really good speed. I don't necessarily need, like, the next Jacoby Ford or insert Raiders 4-2 running receiver here, but we do need to get some speed. For sure. We start the offseason with $64 million in cap space. And I would like to open as Robert Spillane has adjusted his demand. And I think I'd like to offer him this two-year contract. And he's going to be testing, actually. So we'll have to see if he comes back later on. We're not tagging him. I really should have moved him to middle linebacker. But he's still asking, I think, for... Uh, a reasonable salary for like an 80 overall star dev off ball linebacker even. I do want to let Hunter Renfro go. I already have new plans for the slot. Divine Diablo. After we see Spillane turn us down. I don't think this would hurt and he wants, he has a lot of interest in coming back. We re-sign Malcolm Kuntz for edge rush def. We're going to let Tyler Hall test after he didn't do much during the regular season. I might bring back Troutman later, but to sign him for seven a year right now doesn't sound great. Even 73 overall tight ends are asking for pretty good money. And then we got Jalen Jeffries, who is depth at safety, who turns us down. Used to be you could sign these guys under 70 overall with pretty much any offer, but... Seems that has changed. And I don't think we'll be extending or trying to extend anybody else. Jerry Tillery was our top defensive tackle this year. And he had 46 tackles, 3 TFLs. But I, I think he's more of a, a backup and he's 28 years old. I'm actually going to offer to Nick Leverett. I like having good offensive line depth. And this looks to leave us with about $53 million in cap space. A good place to begin free agency. Let's see who's out there this season. Hopefully some defensive tackles. We got Tua Tungavailoa and half the league wants him. Demarcus Lawrence, Wyatt Teller. We have some guards. We have Amari Cooper, who was originally drafted by the Raiders. That seems like it was such a long time ago. We got DJ Reader available. That would definitely help at D-Tackle, albeit more of a short-term move. And then you got some players at positions that I'm not sure are really on our radar. So D-Tackle's the big one. You got Reader and Armstead here, both available. Armstead's really interested. Puna Ford as well. But I am primarily want to make this move for run defense. And DJ Reader would really boost that and make me feel a lot more confident in sticking a rookie next to him. We made this defense a lot better in free agency last year. And we're going to try to hopefully do the same now. $18.5 million offer. Now, could we find a player that fits what we want at wide receiver in free agency? Not at the overall tier I want, like a starting caliber player. But one move here that would be kind of intriguing is kind of a second chance here for Rashad Bateman. He's not like a deep threat. Like at Minnesota, he was, you know, doing a lot of the big slot stuff. I saw him being productive in the NFL, but injuries have slowed down his development. But I think he fits. Although there's a lot of overlap with what I think he can do and what Jacoby Myers can do. I wouldn't be against a one-year deal, but let's see what else is out there. Because these, these free agents are asking for a lot more money than they used to. And I haven't done a lot of off-seasons here in this game especially. I know they patched in the contract demand scaling with salary cap increases, which is really nice. And will hopefully make the future years in the series a little more interesting. I do see Tommy Tremble here. I'm kind of interested. He's looking at $5 million a season. 
But for starting roles, I guess we, we did have Spillane Test. He is getting a little interest too. So he might end up getting that multi-year deal. It's not like he's coming off an amazing year with us. He played a lot of snaps, but it didn't seem like he was making plays quite as often as Devin White was. I feel like I kind of have to be a little aggressive here in free agency, not having that first round pick. Because the chances of us getting like a day one dominant difference maker, not in the top 50, is a little low. At the positions that I want to uh, find that player. If you have to find a guard in the second round, it's different. I think that at receiver, there's a steep drop off. So I'm going to put the two-year offer out for Spillane. And that leaves us enough room to also try bringing in Bateman. And I think if I can get Bateman, then I don't have to necessarily go wide out. I really don't want to force my hand at having to draft a certain position with that first pick. So $10.5 million, just one year, because I really don't know what to expect from Bateman. I'd actually really like to have Troutman back, but I just don't want to pay him $7 million a year. I'm much more comfortable at about five. So I think I'm only going to make the four offers for now because I need to see if I have this 10.7 left or if it ends up being more. So we got Reader, Spillane, Bateman, and Adam Troutman. And after the first phase of this round, we have signed Reader, Spillane, and Bateman. So already addressing the critical holes I thought that we had, opening up the draft for us to go more BPA. There's one more player I'd like to offer to at defensive tackle. I'm thinking maybe Javon Kinlaw at 27 years old. I know he hasn't had like great production or anything, but I want another veteran there who could potentially start. I'm going to try knocking down the salary though. Like these numbers are still on the higher end. And uh, I guess I have to feel out free agency here and see if this kind of thing works. I'm already getting thin on space when it comes to adding depth, and I'm not sure how much more I actually need. So Kinlaw and Troutman are going to wait this out, and we're probably going to lose out here on Kinlaw. We'll just withdraw that. I should try to avoid pretty much anybody that's going in round one. Moving up the 20 plus spots it would take is just more than I feel like spending so there are some receivers you can probably cross off. There's Justin Gary going at 23, unfortunately. I was really intrigued with him. Hunter Renfro is going to Pittsburgh. Two years, 14.1 million. Milton Williams might be one more player worth pursuing here. We have $12 million in space. We can't afford much more than that, but at least getting a serviceable veteran here. He had five sacks last season, and I'm going to offer two years just to make this offer a little more intriguing. And there we go, another signing for this defense. A lot of rebuilding on that side of the ball in our first two off seasons. And patience also pays off for Adam Troutman, who also returns. I think that we're about out of cap space here for free agent participation. So I ran into this issue with my other franchise on my main channel where a team that already has a good quarterback is trying to sign to a Tunga Vailoa. I already undid the signing a couple times because it was the Colts who were trying to sign him. He'll be a free agent going into the regular season or the preseason actually. We'll see where he ends up. But Demarcus Lawrence goes to Arizona. Wyatt Teller to the Jets. Joel Batonio to Tampa. Amari Cooper. He's going to go down to Tennessee now for a couple years with Ryan Jensen, Deontay Johnson to the Bears. So those are the big free agent moves. And how do we want to approach the draft now? I feel Justin Gary is out of reach, but maybe I could find some other receivers I could finish the profiles on to see if there's somebody who has better than their projected talent. Cordell Parker, solid speed. I'd like at least good there. I want someone a little more explosive. Not a bad player, but I feel like I have enough info on him. A little more speed here from Heath Corbett. K. 
Can't run deep routes. Not a great route runner overall. Definitely a project. We may have to include Ramon Holt, who is really a pure deep threat, one of the fastest receivers in the class. He does have some good skills going for him, but he's not as versatile as other players I liked. But again, I'm picking in the second round, so if he were more versatile, he'd be around one guy. I don't have many defensive tackles on my board. There's a pretty quick drop-off here in talent, and a lot of these guys I thought just didn't fit what I was looking for. I do want someone who can help stop the run a little bit, and I want to avoid some of the lower strength defensive tackles. So Matthew Callahan has more average strength, and this is a skill set that could actually complement DJ Reader. So I do have interest in him more so than I did earlier. Hopefully by backing out of that menu and going back in here, I can actually get the workouts to go through properly. I'm actually going to finish this scouting here. Well, get more on Justin Gary because I was really intrigued with him. We'll finish off Ramon Holt. And maybe we finish off Ramon Hayes as well because I thought he looked really promising. So we got Jalen Clinton as the first receiver. And nobody else until Gary at 23. That might be too high for us to move. I liked Rashad Ross a lot. We're going to have to see who slips out of round one. And we are underway in the 2025 NFL Draft. We have some intriguing quarterbacks that should go pretty early. It's just a matter of when. And the Jets take George Garrison, the first quarterback here out of Boston College. And then a quarterback goes to Cleveland, Hunter Jenkins. It's fun to see teams make changes here in the franchise. It's already two early quarterbacks here to new teams. A lot of players in the trenches going, and the Cardinals end up going Malachi Gary in the secondary. Jalen Clinton goes at 14. Ooh, a quarterback goes to the Rams now. All right, Dalton Barrett. So this is the spot if you want to leapfrog the Steelers. To make this work, the Packers would want our next two first round picks. Yeah, these are not going to work. And they don't have enough cap space to actually take on a player. So this has to be done with only picks. And I don't think you're coming anywhere close to 22. So Justin Gary ends up going to Pittsburgh. Bengals take a running back first round. So do the Commanders. Miami takes a quarterback because Tua Tungavailoa is a free agent. And now Rashad Ross. And wrapping up round one, Tyler Ware. And we're on to round two. Still 18 picks away from our turn. I got Ramon Hayes here. And if you want him, you better get ready to move up soon. He does have round one talent. He's 21 years old. Very good combine across the board. So maybe we can try making a move for him. I just don't know that there's a receiver on that level left. Ramon Holt, though, did have round one to two talent. A little better than his projection. I don't think that we're going to come away with both players, but I'm probably going to look for defense here again. I do have a couple like later fallbacks at wide receiver. I did like Anthony Clinton quite a bit. Thought he was really good for a day three option and he was the fastest in the class. So if we want to do it the Raider way, we know we have to come away with him. We're not going to trade with the Chargers, but we will trade or try to with New England. I had to give up four picks for this to work, but we're moving up. Giving up one of our third rounders this year, a five next year, and a seven two years from now. So at some point, it might be nice to trade back and maybe get some of those back. But we're going to go here and I think take a really good defensive player. I want Oklahoma's Ramon Hayes. And he's got hidden development at 6'4", 305. 
87 strength and 79 speed is really nice. Going to be tough to outrun him once he breaks through the middle. And lining him up next to DJ Reader, that's a significant upgrade to our D-line going into year two. Now, giving up that pick, or those picks, we now don't pick again until late third. All right, let's see how many players we have remaining on my board. All right, 17 isn't too bad. I didn't scout like every position in depth, but all the ones we need to address or could. So they have Anthony Clinton here as the 12th ranked receiver at the moment. So I don't think right now is the best time to take him. And I don't really like Marquise Gibson. He's just kind of fast and doesn't have another rating that's really intriguing. One thing I've been doing lately is just checking out like the available board and finding, all right, who's the highest like ranked player that I actually have on my board. And I've already been over the receiver I wasn't really a huge fan of, but Curtis Ford is next. And I just thought he's a potential starting guard, and that's a position for us that's okay, not great. I'm going to take him because I view him as the BPA. Ooh, hidden development. There we go. So we have taken two hidden dev guards now in the series. We might have an extra potential starter this year with that. Now we move ahead to the fourth round. Let's see if we can go receiver now. You still got Gibson, you still got Anthony Clinton, and then Tyree McDaniels is the other receiver I like. Let's just take a look at him quickly. He's a physical archetype, has good speed, good release, but pretty raw route running. I'm feeling pretty good now about going to take Rashad Bateman this year in free agency. But now I think I'm going to take Anthony Clinton and look for a wide receiver to develop. He's got some serious wheels, man. 99 agility, 98 speed. We might have a, our kick returner replacement right here. Now we go all the way to the sixth round, and I'm wondering if we could trade back and maybe get a future pick here. We could get this uh, future seven. We could also get a future six from Minnesota. I think I will probably do that so now we're left with two seventh rounders and i can't imagine there are too many players on the board but every now and then i find some udfa prospects that i like and we got tyree mcdaniels at wide receiver i was curious about him we do have like trey tucker a spec catch be release yeah let's go for it here in the seventh round He's got size and speed. There might be something to develop. I also scouted some vertical threats at tight end, but a lot of them were taken. Everyone I liked was taken. But now I'm going to take a chance on Joe Roberts and see if I can find that player here at the end of the draft hidden development. All right, then. Let's party. Feeling good about this offseason as well, guys. Let's take a look at our draft recap. So I didn't anticipate moving up, but doing the homework, you know, I felt like it ended up being the best decision for us. Ramon Hayes, 74 overall, and probably starting right away. And with that good power moves and the strength, I see no reason why he can't be really good. And he has 72 awareness. I think I'm paying a little more attention to that here in this game, the intangibles. So Ramon Hayes, he looks to be the total package, and we got him in round two. Curtis Ford, he starts off pretty good at 73 overall. He's not the strongest guy, so you worry about power, especially at guard. So I don't know if I will play him immediately, because while he has potential, he's got some pretty key weaknesses here. Anthony Clinton at 72, I'm pretty happy with that overall. Normal dev on him, but he has a very specific skill set where I, I don't think necessarily you need the highest overall to have a deep threat. Like he already has the speed. He has some deep route running. Now is, is catching. You have to kind of ignore that. But I think for what role I want him to play, 
he could make an impact early on. But we don't have to force it after getting Bateman. And then we got wide receiver Tyree McDaniels, who will kind of have this ball of clay skill set here where you can choose what route running you want him to focus on he has release so you can play him inside or out and i'm uh, i'm intrigued getting him in the seventh round and then a 60 overall tight end with hidden development you can't force him onto the field right away but you can maybe develop him a decent bit over his rookie year to be a depth tight end. He won't hold that probable star development long, but maybe it helps him become a backup tight end for the future. Given the capital that we had, I think that is a pretty good offseason and draft. I'm just curious how good the receiver the Steelers took was. And we've got Justin Gary at a 75 overall. And it would have been too tough to move up for him. But he looks to be a really good receiver to be going that late in the 20s. Because this to me is top 10 ratings. Looks like the Jets got a really good quarterback early on in George Garrison. Hunter Jenkins is 72. A lot of quarterbacks went in the first two rounds. So we could see some big changes going forward here in the franchise. Here's a look at George Garrison, who has normal development at 79 overall. Really good short accuracy, solid medium accuracy, good arm. That's a 49 injury? Wow. Super injury pro, normal dev. What a risky move here by the New York Jets. He must have had like an injury pro and storyline at some point that I didn't see. Let's see if that's the lowest. It is. No one else is even close. Now, I haven't decided yet if we'll do anything in the preseason like we did for year one. I don't know that there's enough that I want to see there, but you can let me know what you think in the comments. It does take some time if I want to include preseason stuff. But I'm looking forward to seeing how Stockton plays in the new scheme. I'm going to start over completely. Go to Cleveland's Playbook. Make some changes that I think make sense. And we'll see if this ends up being a better fit for Stockton. I'd like to be a little more vertical than we were last year. And we'll just have to see if he plays like the quarterback in the first half of the year or the quarterback at the second half of the year. Because that guy was not a starter. The biggest changes along the offense are the scheme, followed by Rashad Bateman and shuffling around the receivers a little bit. And maybe we end up doing something at guard. We have Dylan Parham there. We have John Runyon, Sean Childress. So is there room for Curtis Ford? Compared to Dylan Parham, who is a power archetype, a little more comfortable playing him immediately, but same strength as Ford, just better against power and no standout weakness. He's just not great in any area. What you do there probably is make Ford one of your focus players and try to play him early and see if problems show up. I do worry about that pass block power, but if we just compare his ratings to that of Parham, then we see that that's the main thing you lose. If his first couple upgrades can boost that pass block power a little bit, I'll feel a little more confident, but we should probably be playing him. And then I'm really excited to see Reader and then Ramon Hayes, this year's top drafted rookie. Really could have been a first rounder. And now we might have a really nasty defensive front to go and try to rattle Patrick Mahomes and the rest of this AFC West. Let me know in the comment section what you think of our team going into next year. I'm excited to continue this Raiders franchise. I feel like we have a really fun series here just really getting underway. And I feel like the moves we made today give us a chance at having a top five defense. But that is going to do it for the offseason. I will call that a success. And hopefully the coaching change for the offense ends up being the missing piece for us 
But that is it for today, everybody. Thank you for watching. Please leave your thoughts down below in the comment section. Leave a like if you haven't already. And subscribe to the channel. Raiders Franchise Season 2 coming your way next time with Denzel Stockton trying to break free of the Jamarcus Russell comparisons. Have a great day.